breakthrough is near you've been praying for it you've been asking for it you've been waiting for it and in this video i want to share with you the thought around you knowing and give you the signs that if you are experiencing these signs or if you've seen these signs in your life the breakthrough is near welcome back to my youtube channel and welcome if it is your first time watching so when i talk about your breakthrough is near all i mean is that your breakthrough is within your reach. You are about embracing your breakthrough. You are a moment away, a step away, a consistency away from grabbing your breakthrough. Now, first of all, when I thought about breakthrough and I prayed about it, I prayed to God, God, I need a breakthrough. I need a breakthrough in this journey, even in this journey of doing YouTube. I need a breakthrough in my life financially and all of that. And God said, you already have the answer you already have your breakthrough and that's when i came to this idea that my breakthrough is near now how did he speak to me about that i realized that i've been looking at external results to know that my breakthrough is near and god was pointing me to the fact that it's about the internal results it's about the growth it's about the things that i've been taught through the process of me walking through life and learning and doing my work now that is found in these four signs that i want to share with you number one you have a great work ethic now it is quite okay for you to pray for your breakthrough and ask god for breakthrough but as much as you're praying for breakthrough are you prepared for it such that when god brings a breakthrough to you you would embrace it and it wouldn't become a burden now, that is where I came to this place that having a great work ethic shows or is a sign that your breakthrough is closer to you than you thought it is. And working hard could be seen as a Christian, as, you know, a burden. I don't have to work hard, you know, grace without labor and all of those stuff that people used to say, favor without labor. Now, that is not God. God does not say that you shouldn't work hard. Working hard is a noble act. It's a noble thing to do, but God does not want you to struggle or to toil endlessly. That is the path that God does not want you to find yourself doing. But working hard is something that he wants you to do because you need to have a great work ethic. And that differentiates you from a lazy person who refuses to work. The scripture says in Proverbs, despite their desires, the lazy will come to ruin for their hands refuse to work now if i might get to a vulnerable moment i would say that working hard is not easy it is difficult it is training it picks you up and gets you out of your comfort zone and particularly that is what god really needs god doesn't want you to sit and find a comfort so zone for yourself or a comfort place god wants you to have joy god wants to give you the best but God doesn't want you to settle. And when you are too comfortable, you will settle. So that's why God needs you to have a great work ethic, which is whatever work you are doing, the Bible says you have to do it all your might, like putting your effort to do it, do it with your heart, do it with passion. And personally, when I started my YouTube journey, after procrastinating for so long, like I will, I don't have this, I don't have a mic, I don't have a camera, and I'm using my phone to do the videos I've done so far. That I was waiting. I had the phone. And I was like, I don't have a camera. I don't have this. I don't have that. And when I finally started the YouTube channel, I gave myself a, cha a challenge that every week, every single week, I'm going to post a video. And that wasn't the sweetest challenge to give myself because I was like, how am I going to be able to meet up with this? Where are the ideas coming from? The ideas for the video. I was scared about a lot of things. And then in the midst of it, there has been frustrations, to be honest, and having to write the idea, create the, the idea and, and put it down and arrange it and then shoot the video, then edit the video and then post it up. It's not been the easiest journey doing all of, all of those things. And then sometimes some video doesn't come out so well. Some will, but some don't. And, and it's frustrating. Now, all i have seen in this process is that my work ethic has grown i have grown i'm working harder because i have to still wake up and go to work every weekday from four to eight 
I still do this and I'm able to post up video each week. So personally, when God told me your breakthrough is near, you already have your prayer answered. And I was like, okay, I can see the work ethic that has been developed in me has already shown me that I have my breakthrough. It's not just near, it is here. As much as I would like to get as many views as I would want to get and as many subscriptions that I would want to get, the one thing that gives me joy is when I'm able to write my idea, shoot the video, edit it and post it up. Once I post my video up, I feel fulfilled. Now, that wasn't the earlier feeling I had when I started this. I used to feel burnt out and I would just be like, oh, thank God, thank God, finally. But now it's a joy. My joy is in the process. I feel fulfilled after being able to do this. And that happens to me in just, not just my YouTube, but in other areas of my life that when I have a target set on something and I work hard towards it and I'm able to get it done, there's a sense of fulfillment. And that is a work ethic that it's developed in me. And then that I know that since I'm not lazy, I'm working hard. I can't come to real. Same thing with you. If you have a work ethic in whatsoever area of working as a parent, as a leader, as a business, you know, manager, a, a business owner, whatsoever place you find yourself, your work ethic is a sign that your breakthrough is near. And now to take it to my next point, the next sign is your breakthrough is near when you realize that your breakthrough is a journey. Now, I know when we think about breakthrough, a lot of people will think about, I just need a miracle to happen. I just need a miracle, a turn around, like on a YouTube journey, somebody will just need going a video that can go viral, which is very good. But I want to say this, that a miracle is part of your breakthrough, but it is not the breakthrough itself. Your breakthrough is a journey. Because the miracle happened within cancel all the hard work that you've worked all through the years because the miracle happened didn't cancel all the efforts that you put in so it's about all that journey that has taken you to this miracle and that is why i say miracle is part of the journey of your breakthrough but it is not your breakthrough now in the story in the bible from the children of israel when god gave the manna in the wilderness the manna was a needed miracle as what we would call a breakthrough for them in the place of hunger and lack. But then that was not what would sustain them to get to the promise. Their breakthrough was for them to join into the promised land. But then they needed miracles along the way. So that is why God will bring those miracles along the way. And that is why the first sign I said is your work ethic. When God brings a miracle in whatsoever area of business or family, of something that you are doing and then you you find an open door to thrive it doesn't mean that you have to just rely on that and relax it means you are in this journey of breakthrough which is you have to create a culture of continuous striving a culture that even when there is no miracle that pops up you are still thriving and that happens when you know that my breakthrough is a continuous journey of me consistently working had of me consistently finding fulfillment in what I do. And, and I have to be careful by saying that because your mind should not be focused on, like you should not find identity in your work, but you could, you know, find a sense of fulfillment when you are able to do your work, but not an identity. That is a whole other video from this. Now, going forward, the journey of breakthrough is a journey of working hard learning and growing as you go that is the joy i'm working hard i'm learning i'm growing reiterated i'm working hard i'm learning i'm growing if you have found yourself in that place you're learning you're growing you are on your journey of your breakthrough your breakthrough is near it's even happening already because you can see yourself growing you can see yourself learning you can see yourself getting into what are realms of knowledge that you never had before? You can see yourself transformed in the process. That is breakthrough. I know you need that big financial breakthrough, but it's going to come. And you need this process such that when it comes, 
your joy will be full. It is this expectation of finally seeing the light at the end of the tunnel that you were waiting for. Because when somebody starts something, you'll be like, there's a light at the end of the tunnel, or you're not seeing it. So the journey of breakthrough is to get you to see that light at the end of that tunnel. Now, Paul Apostle in 1 Corinthians 15 verse 10 talked about his journey of breakthrough. And he said, but by the grace of God, I am what I am. And his grace to me was not without effect. No, I worked harder than all of them. Yet not I, but the grace of God that was with me. In this scripture, you see that Paul had great work ethic. He said, I worked harder than all other apostles, but yet not I. And I want you to see that he did not say that hard work can go alone to get you to your breakthrough without the grace of God. No, he actually said, by virtue of the grace of God that was bestowed on me, that was given to me, I work hard. I did not put that grace in vain. Which means, for you, how could you interpret that? God has given you grace gifts, charisma. God has blessed you with knowledge. God has blessed you with a voice to sing. God has blessed you with, with ideas. God has blessed you with things, which is his grace gift. God has bestowed grace upon you. Now, if you don't know how to work hard, if you don't have a work ethic, you will put the grace of God given to you in vain and actually live and behave as if you don't have anything in you, as if you are empty of the grace of God. No, you have the grace of God. God has blessed you. God has given you his grace. Now, you have to work so that the grace will not be in vain. The grace given to you. Paul said, and the grace of God that was bestowed on me was not in vain. It did not come to me with no effect because I worked harder, but yet not I. So this is the part that you need to get that even when I work hard, I am not depending on my hard work for my breakthrough. I am working hard and I am partnering as if that's like looking for a better word. I, I am having a companionship with the grace of God. The grace of God and my hard work is hand in hand. And that is when and how I can get to my breakthrough. Which is I'm not dependent on my hard work. But that doesn't mean I am not working hard. The way I would put it personally is I work hard. Yet not I. But it is the grace of God. Which is it is God in me working through me and enabling me to do the work I ought to do excellently. And that is when I realize I am partnering with the grace of God. I am depending on God and then I am working hard. And why do I have to still depend on God when I'm working hard? So that I won't be puffed up and stay in self-confidence. So that I will trust God and know that I have a security. I have somebody who's got my back. I have somebody who holds me. When I want to fall, I have a leaning place. I'm leaning on the grace of God. Third sign, when you come to this place that you make a resolve, I am not giving up. Your breakthrough is near. You know, in the journey of life and in the journey of destiny and um, work as a parent and leader, whatsoever place you find yourself, you're going to come up with opposition. You're going to come up with resistances. And in the midst of those resistance and opposition, you're going to feel like giving up. Like, I'm just tired of this. I'm tired. I can't keep up with this. But it is the place for you to come to the resolve that I am tired, but I'm not going to give up. This work is tedious, but I'm not going to give up. Not now. And this is not about staying in a pessimistic place, but it's a place of recognizing the Bible hope. What does the Bible hope say? That I have a positive and confident expectation of good. This is going to turn out in my favor. I believe to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. I believe to have a breakthrough in the land of the living. I believe to find myself in financial freedom in the land of the living. I'm not waiting till I get to heaven. God doesn't want us to reign in heaven. He said, those that have received the abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness shall reign in life. So if I reign in life, I reign above sickness. That is a breakthrough also. I reign above struggling because the grace of God is partnering in my hard work and I'm thriving instead of striving. The story in Acts of the Apostles chapter 4, Peter and John starting their ministry 
you know, the ministry of Christ and the church, they faced opposition. Now, in chapter 4, they did this miracle, one of the first miracles that they experienced in their life, God praising miracle. And then people were rejoicing and it was a good thing. But then the elders of the Jew and, and the chief priests called on to them and threatened them and told them, don't speak again in this name. Don't speak again in the name of Jesus. Let's read that scripture together. To keep them from spreading their propaganda any further, we must warn them not to speak to anyone in Jesus' name again. The council then threatened them further, but they finally let them go. Now, after Peter and John had received this threat from the elders of the Jew, and know as a human, their heart is sick. Just, they, they are afraid. The beautiful thing I've seen here, which I want to talk about, is that when they were afraid, their response is something that we can learn from. How did they respond to their fear? How did they respond to the opposition? How did they respond to the threat? Instead of them to respond in draw, drawing back, and withdrawing their passion, they engaged in prayer. The external result they got wasn't even lining up because all they got was straight, even when they did something good. So sometimes you might do something good and people don't give you the appreciation you so desire. Are you going to wait for their appreciation? Or are you going to ask God to burden you up, to give you boldness to keep on doing the work? Are you going to give up? Or are you going to have strength to move forward so Peter and John went in and prayed to God. And now, O oh Lord, hear their threats and give us, your servants, great boldness in preaching your word. After this prayer, the meeting place shook and they were filled with the Holy Spirit. Then they preached the word of God with boldness. Now, if you read the scripture down, you see that the church grew and the work grew. And then great, with great power, they did the work and great grace was upon them. And what is this saying? In the midst of, of the opposition and resistance, you need boldness. And this boldness will not be given to you by, by your, you know, initial gra gra, by, by, by your human confidence. It is given to you through the Holy Spirit of God. It is when you know I have backing. God has got my back. I'm not alone in this journey. That's why I'm not giving up. I don't just come up as a human and say I'm not giving up because, you know, nobody can stop me. That would be pride and, and that would be an empty confidence. So you don't want to be in a place of empty confidence. That is why you need the Holy Spirit of God to burden you up, to make you confident, to make you bold, to do the work you're doing as a parent so that you not be a weak parent who is afraid to talk to you your children maybe as a partner in marriage so that you will not walk in fear instead you walk in the boldness of the spirit of god to do the things you ought to do excellently in whatever thing you get to face i want you to have this position that i will refuse to give up like i refuse to give up i will present my request to god if i'm being threatened if your position is hard on me instead of saying i'm gonna give up I will present my request to God. I will ask God to make me bold. And when God makes you bold and brave, nothing will stop you. Your breakthrough is accessible by you. It is within your reach. You can grab it. That is it. My fourth and final point or sign is embracing consistency. I know people talk about consistency a lot. And now I want to give you a cheat code for consistency. Consistency doesn't just come because of you working hard consistently. Because if your heart loses the passion, even when you are doing the work, it will be shown in the work that you do that the passion is lost. It will be shown in the work that you do that you are just trying to keep up, you know, in the grind so that people won't laugh at you that you've given up. You don't need a consistency that you've lost your passion. You don't need a consistency that you are actually you know, doing the work in stress and anxiety. You need to work from a place of faith and rest. And that is the kind of consistency that God wants you to operate in. So now what is the cheat code for consistency that I found in the scriptures? You have to understand and realize that consistency cannot go without strength and courage. And I discovered this in 
Joshua chapter 1, when God was speaking to Joshua, in chapter 1 verse 6, God told him, be strong and courageous. And again, in verse 7, he said to him, be strong and very courageous. And I'm like, God, why do you keep on repeating this? It is like a reminder. And he said it again the third time as a sign of divine perfection. God is telling Joshua, be strong and courageous. Now, in verse 9, it said, Have I not commanded you, be strong and courageous? Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged. For the Lord, your God, will be with you wherever you go. Now, God knows that in the journey of whatever thing you are doing, there are fears, there are discouragements along the journey, and there are places that you feel like giving up. And he told Joshua, you need strength and you need courage so that you will not give up. What is strength and courage? Of course, it's clear that you need strength physically, which is you need to walk in a place of faith and rest, whereby you are not walking from a place of being burnt out. You need bodily strength and passion, and then you need courage, which is mentally and psychologically you are sound. To me, it's like God is saying, you have to checkmate your mental health as much as you're doing the work you are doing. You have to checkmate your physical health. I hope that whatever you're doing is not affecting your health physically and spiritually, like mentally. Now, a caveat to this that came to my mind was, why did God not tell Joshua, I will make you strong and courageous? Did he say to him, be strong and courageous, which is, it is his responsibility. It is my responsibility to be strong and courageous. And that is the only place that I can come up to have consistency. By the time I lose my strength and courage, my mental passion, I can't keep up with the consistency to do the work. So when I embrace consistency, I have to realize that the cheat code to consistency is strength and courage, bodily strength, mind strength, health strength, I have to checkmate that. I have to keep myself healthy. Is it by exercising? I need it. I will exercise and still trust God. Is it by eating right? I will eat right and still trust God. Is it by finding rest? I will find rest and still trust God. Don't kill yourself. You have only one body. Don't kill yourself in doing the work. Don't do the work in a place of being burnt out. But do it from a place of rest. Mentally, you need to checkmate yourself. Am I okay? Where is my passion right now? Strength and courage. So in the places of fear, God is saying, the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. In the place of discouragement, he's saying, don't be discouraged. I am with you. Don't be discouraged. I am walking with you. You're not walking alone. So I hope that this point that I've said in this video is actually speaking to you. That your breakthrough is near and now it's your turn let me know in the comment section which part of this video speaks to you the most and share your experience to me down in the comment section and i believe that it will actually encourage other people who will read through to be able to be vulnerable this is a safe space for you thank you for watching this video and i hope to see you in my next youtube video i am over weapon this is my youtube channel do well to hit the subscribe button and give this video a thumbs up and share it to someone. Find one person and share it to that person, even if it's one person. Thank you and God bless you. Bye-bye.